Hello, this is Mikey Gay from Scratch. Welcome to another episode of the Game Dev Toolbox. Uh, look at the tools that are essential for game developers. And today we're looking at JetBrains Web Store. Now, this isn't a, a game dev uh, directly related product, but obviously it's of, of a lot of use for specific type of developers. And that is, uh, as you can guess by the name WebStorm, uh, web developers. If you work in um, JavaScript, uh, Dart, or TypeScript, uh, this is a very, very good code editor. Actually, it's well beyond that. It's actually a full-blown IDE. It's a full integrated development environment. And what it does is it brings all the disparate uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, Dart, etc. technologies, such as uh, Yeoman, Grunt, uh, NPM, all those things in together into a single package. And on top of that, it gives you a full debugging experience, etc. So if you're working in the web world, but you miss a full-blown, say, Visual Studio type experience, this is hands down the best package you can get. Now, there are some challenges there. First off, it's competing against free products, and that's always tricky. Um, so it has to justify its price. And the other challenge is its price just went up and changed to a subscription model. Um, so there is a lot of justification to do here. And keep in mind, there are completely free versions of stuff that do uh, a lot of what WebStorm does. For example, there's Bracket, Atom, and Visual Studio Code, which do uh, editing and start integrating some of these tools in as well. But there's nothing that competes on a full package level yet, at least not that I am aware of. Now, speaking of price, let's get that out of the way right away. This is not a free tool by any definition, but there is a 30-day a trial available, I believe. And sadly, now, WebStorm's price is up to $129 a year. And I think when I first started subscribing, I paid like $60. Bucks. Um, so the subscriptions have jumped rather substantially. Now, they did do a very uh, nice thing for existing customers. I'm subscribed for the next two or three years for a very solid price. And when your subscription runs out, you just don't get updates. So your product continues to work. So think of it not necessarily as a traditional subscription model. Um, so that is in the category I'm at. And my pricing was, again, even better than this. I think I got like three years for 60 bucks or something. So if you're an existing customer, the upgrade prices are definitely worth it. But if you're a new, price, new product uh, developer coming in, uh, $129 a year for the first year can be a little bit hard to bite. Uh, so definitely it has to justify its cost. So let's find out if it actually does. Let's fire it up. And this, where did you go? Da, 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 there is WebStorm. Now, if you've used any of JetBrains' other products, uh, probably IntelliJ or possibly PHP Storm or um, RubyMine, etc., they're all very similar. They're built on the same technology. So if you know one, you know your way around all of them for the most part. And this didn't load right. Okay, doesn't normally load to this point. So let's go ahead, we'll do a new project. And here you can start seeing all of the stuff that this is bringing together. A new project, we can start with HTML5 boilerplate versions, uh, pick the level of the template we want to work with, uh, pulled from GitHub, uh, Web Starter Kit, React, Twitter Bootstrap, Foundation Angular, or we can create a Node.js app, um, PhoneGap Cordova app, and you're seeing it's pulling in all of the associated things or finding if they're installed on your machine. And it, it just works. It works very well, very clean. So if you come in and you're creating a node-based app, uh, if you want templating, you can come in here and pick which one. So this is one of the big strengths of uh, WebStorm. It ties together all of these different technologies that are out there and makes it easy for you. Um, or here in this case is Yeoman. Now, I'm talking to primarily game developers, so I'm going to stick with a game developer example. Uh, but... You can, with everything we've done here, you can, as you can see here, there's Dart, and there's also TypeScript. So you can quite easily work with those other languages as well. Um, but I'm going to go in. I've already shown, uh, I've already configured and run Phaser, so that's what I'm actually going to be using. But you can see here from, I, I'm sorry, I don't actually know how to say this. It's Yeoman or Yeoman. Um, Yo or Yeoman. Uh, it's Yeoman. Anyways, the Yeoman library is allows you to kind of create... Uh, startup packages for various projects that exist out there. So you can see like an Angular generator, um, Bootstrap, Cordova, etc. So pick any live. So create JS probably has. Oh, it doesn't. Um, so in this example, I am actually going to use Phaser. And you can see there's a number of generators here. There's for a Phaser, Phaser Browserify, TypeScript Phaser, etc. And I'm just going to use the stock Phaser one, which I've actually already configured right here. So you just come in, pick your generator, and you would have installed it, but I already did. And then just click Next. And each one of these generators is configured to um, the spec. So basically, that when they set it up, they did their configuration. So here, let me just come in and go Phaser Demo. 
and obviously I'm turning into a human commercial, which is not the intention here, uh, but you can see I can choose which physics configuration I want, and each generator is going to be different for each library you're working with, and I'm not going to have any physics for this example. And just go ahead, so I have NPM and Bower installed already. Bower is an NPM library, um, and you would have to have them in order to do this. So it's going to go ahead and run these things and just basically download and configure everything for me. Oops, let me see if I can... Uh, I screwed up. All right, I'm going to pause and undo all that. I picked a name I already used, and I'm probably going to leave myself in a semi-messed up state. So let me pause and undo all that. All right, we're back. I'm just going to pick a name that definitely works now. And I have not used that name before. I do not want physics. Now go ahead and run. And this is basically going to go out there, uh, download all of the stuff we need, and configure an environment for us. Now this actually takes a minute or two to run, so I'm just going to pause it, and we'll, we'll resume in a second. And I can show you your way around WebStorm when we get back. So essentially, this is just creating us a JavaScript project using the phaser library that's up and ready to go. Uh, so it's a nice way to jump into different products without having to go through all the setup and the config stages. So see you in a second. Okay, so now we are here. You can see the project it's set up for us. So it did all of this work for us. The configuration setup is all ready and done. Uh, so now we just jump in, and you can see here's the index. This is the starting point of our application. Uh, let me just right-click, and... Okay, I can't easily... Unfortunately, I'm running at, this at a slightly different resolution than I normally do, so text is a little smaller uh, than I prefer. And I can actually show you something right away, uh, one of the strengths of WebStorm, especially for people like me that do blogging, is I can come in here right away and go and turn on presentation mode. And this allows you to basically focus on directly uh, showing code. And that's what I am showing right now. Now, I'm going to come back here. Let's kick that. Come on. There, what are you doing? There. Uh, so, come back out. We can turn presentation mode off. Uh, so, it just makes things a little bit more visible. Now, another thing you can see that it did there is it collapsed down the interface. So, we can pop this interface in and out at any particular time. So, you can see all the different pieces of it. Or, we can actually just open that back up. Uh, we can minimize them. We can split them. Uh, so let's go back to our project instead. Um, now I'm going to show you a couple things in the editor itself. So here's uh, the JavaScript such, and this is just the simple game that it created for us. And the main thing I want to show you, this is a very, very trivial example. Let's just do a run configuration here. So I'm going to come in here, run, edit configurations, and define a new one. Now here you can see a couple of the other things that are being tied in here. It's uh, Chromium, uh, Cucumber, Dart, Firefox, Remoting, Gulp, Grunt. Uh, this is the one we're ultimately going to use, but uh, Node.js, all these things, all these runtimes, uh, the PhoneGap, Cordova, Spy, um, etc., are all already configured in here for you. So I'm just going to go ahead with a standard JavaScript. You can come in here, you can pick a browser you want to work with. You can see I have loads installed or configured. Um, and just pick the URL. So that's in source, and it's just index.html. Now, one of the cool things there, and we'll see this in a second, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to run this now. And it's going to fire up our browser, and off we go. There's the sample project it gives you, and this just loads into, that's really all it does. Um, but it's a starting point anyways. Uh, but the cool thing there is um, that was actually being hosted in WebStorm. WebStorm actually provides a server, and that's awesome uh, for uh, JavaScript-based development, because then you don't run into the annoying um, XHR or course-related um, JSON configuration errors from trying to run locally. Um, so having that server that you can run on is very nice. Now, another thing you'll notice right here is I have um, a plugin uh, already installed in uh, my browser. There's also one available for pretty much every major browser that supports them. And now what I can do is instead of running it, I'm going to go ahead and do a debug. And this is going to fire up and run uh, WebStorm like normal. Now I'm going to come on back to WebStorm, and let's go into our code for uh, that menu. And here you'll see that menu has an on-down-click handler. I'm just going to come in here, select that line of code, go up here to run, and say toggle line breakpoint. And this is traditional breakpoint like you would get in any standard developer, um, in any standard debugger, or like you get in a browser debugger, but it's directly in your code. And the cool thing is this actually will handle source maps too. So if you're working in Dart or TypeScript, it will automatically map back to the appropriate line that you're set your um, branch point or your uh, breakpoint on. 
Uh, so now we've got it set. We're going to go hit click. So you'll see here it says paused in the debugger. And then we flip on back to the WebStorm settings. And you'll see we are on that line. We have the full suite of debugging, like step over, four step over, step into, step out, run to cursor, etc. So all of the traditional uh, stepping points you would expect from a debugger are in here and enabled. Um, you can also do conditionals, etc. You know, just move that back a bit. Um, now the cool thing also is you have uh, watches you can set up. Uh, you've got your uh, call stack, you've got your uh, automatic watching of locals. I can hover over here. Come on. Thought I could anyways. There we go. And we can do a pop-up drill down into the particular objects, make it up. So the debugger is the best I've seen yet for an HTML5 project. And I can't live without a debugger. So that's why I bought WebStorm in the first place. Now, the debuggers in browsers are getting better, but it's still a step out of your code environment. That's the IDE versus a text editor approach. I like the IDE approach. I am firmly sold on having everything in one place. If you don't care, you don't care. But if you're like me and don't like to debug in a different application, this will look very nice to you. And again, it's probably the best integrated, most logical debugger I've seen, including all of the browsers available. So um, they've done a great job with their debug support. We can also fire it off so that it, it uh, head on back to an index.html. So I need to, let's stop our run here. Uh, when you have an HTML file open, you can see here, you can automatically uh, view in the various different browsers. So now that's not run through a server. So that won't work that well with game code for the most part. Uh, but that debugger approach is a godsend. Now, another part that is incredibly powerful with the way WebStorm works, and this is um, even more true with the typed language like TypeScript or um, Dart, but even with JavaScript, it does a solid job. Now, it does a solid job with JavaScript, it does an excellent job with TypeScript, and that is code completion. So you see right here is like the this.game.state. I can do this dot, and it automatically see it's pulling out. It knows the create and update methods are available, and it also will kind of drill into so this.game, and it can figure out what game is as best as possible. Like I said, TypeScript and such work better, but you do get code completion that works quite well. Um, and that is another thing I find absolutely essential. Now, something else going on right here is you can see there's a watcher just triggered off. Uh, you can configure these to be on or off or whatever, but this is a code formatting one. So it's got um, an irregular, so this file is dented with two spaces instead of four. And we can either turn this off or we can set it to automatically indent and then boom, it'll fix it. So that's a watcher. And there's a number of watchers running, including there's one for, for example, automatically transpiling um, TypeScript or Dart code to JavaScript, etc. So watchers are kind of like web demons that run in the background and monitor your code. You also see we've got the uh, underline and the error thing going on right here because I've currently left it in a broken state. And I'll grab that, delete it, and you'll see, boom, immediately it goes back to. So um, real-time code evaluation, definitely quite powerful. Now, the next thing you've got going on here is they've got solid refactoring tools. And this is something that um, I, in, sorry, NetBrains has always been very good at. So we can go in here and say, refactors this, and then get the various different, um, so we move, copy, extract a variable, a method, inline a value, or change the signature. Um, and those tools are definitely, it basically was the same menu as here, but you can just bring it up quickly with that hotkey there. Um, your, so your common things, re-architecting. So if I change the name of a function, I can have it automatically update all the other modules that use or refer to that function. It's got very good and solid uh, refactoring tools available, which is sweet. Uh, on top of that, we go into straight out tools, and you'll see you've got things in here like uh, V8, which is a... Uh, very popular embedded JavaScript runtime, VM. Uh, you could do profiling in it. You can run grunt, grunt uh, gulp, or NPM tasks directly from here. You can uh, test uh, web services from here, etc. And then next up, we've got full um, source code integration. You can run into, check in and out of um, Git, and I believe Subversion, and a couple other ones, but pretty much most people use Git these days. So you've got full version control support built right in. Um, you can make it fairly transparent to yourself. Now, on top of that, we go back the other way, and then we start seeing the code editing tools that are available here. And there's some pretty sweet stuff. Now, I'm not going to run it, but you can run a code inspection. This takes a long time, but it actually analyzes your code and gives you um, suggestions. You can also come in here and do a quick reform out of your code and have it automatically so you can set up rules for how you like your code to, to look and have it refactor for you. Uh, there's a couple of other things you can do in here, too. Um, so you can do a code cleanup, which we then come in and give it the... Uh, the settings that we want to use. You can do um, inspections, uh, 
bulk moving of, of statements and editing and such. You can do code folding. Uh, you can change your code completion settings. You can wrap, unwrap. You can automatically comment, uncomment, etc. So most of the traditional code editing stuff that you expect is there in code, or for the more generic stuff that you're, you have all your advanced, your find and replaces, your um, case conversion, toggling, um, so you can camel case, etc. Uh, change your indents between spaces, etc. So all the stuff you just expect from a traditional text editor is in here as well. Um, and then under view, we have um, this is where you control the various things that are available to see uh, here. So you know if you wanted to see the gulp tasks or the npm tasks available, etc. Um, those are all um, here out of a view. Now why did I change that out? Um, now, the only other thing of relevance here is so is in addition to uh, the presentation mode, which I briefly showed you earlier, there's also a dif distraction free mode, which is for straight coders to kind of come in here and uh, all the interface is just kind of hidden from you. Uh, nice, clean, if this is your way you prefer to work. Um, or we can go into full screen, which we now have full screen and distraction free. So if you literally just want a wall of source code, it's there. And there are corresponding hotkeys for everything. So if you're a, a, a code typer, you can definitely um, get by this way. And you can also change your hotkeys to match, you know, the, the more common engines that people would choose to use. Uh, so that part is definitely an appealing aspect too. Um, let me check my notes quickly one second. Yeah, so that's about all I want to cover. Then there's, a, there's a ton more packed in behind the scenes here. Pretty much, uh, if there's a JavaScript library out there, a linter or a debugger or uh, anything, you know, uh, JavaScript, -y, something like Grunt comes along, WebStorm will integrate it. And that's probably where WebStorm shines. It brings together the entire ecosystem into one tool. It brings together the entire development process into one tool. It's got solid refactoring. It's got nice coding experience. It's got an integrated debugger. It's got you know everything you need in one place so if you are looking for that swiss army ide it is the best choice by far and in some ways it, using the the classification of an ide it is literally the only choice now in the face of um all those other editors that are getting more and more powerful the likes of um atom or um brackets or visual studio code for example or even just straight text editors such as sublime text or notepad plus plus does this bring enough value to the table to justify the increased price? Now, I've bit fully into the JetBrains ecosystem, so I like their tools. I like IDEs. It's all about IDEs for me. So for me, yes, it easily is justified for the cost. Now, at the new cost, it's a little bit harder for purchase. But if I was working daily in HTML, for sure, I would buy that in a heartbeat. And I will continue to renew my subscription as long as they keep giving me the nice rate. Um, so is it worthwhile to you? I can't tell you what's, what you know, value is a hard thing to quantify, but it is certainly a time saver. So if you are doing this for a living on the paycheck, definitely check out the 30 day because you can easily justify the cost very fast. Um, so again, there is a 30 day fully functional trial out there. Uh, sadly, unlike say uh, IntelliJ IDEA, there isn't a community free version of this. So it's either pay or don't pay, unfortunately. So um, if you like what you saw here, check out the demo. Now I will tell you, if you do like the IDE approach and you do a lot of HTML5 development, WebStorm is by far and away the best product out there. Um, and for game development, especially things like, um, you know, integration into all those various tools for sure. Uh, but um, the integrated debugger and the Cordova integration is just I invaluable. So um, there's a lot here for game developers specifically, and there's a lot here that you could completely ignore because it's more for enterprise -y type development or web development. But if you do a little bit of those, obviously it can become more useful too. So uh, that is WebStorm, uh, an IDE for JavaScript uh, and various other web language development. I hope you enjoyed that. See you later.